So in today's cello lesson, we're gonna have an amazing study to level up our position changes. And for this, we're gonna use study number 27 by the great cello method of Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. Welcome, I'm Ilya Laparev, cellist from Belgium. If you're new here on this channel and if you like this video and the other videos that I'm producing, smash that like button, comment, share, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. This is a great support for me and for my channel. Now let's dive right into the exercise where I'm gonna play the whole exercise through and then I'm gonna give you a couple of practice tips in order to improve your position changes. Coming up next. <sighs> Good, now that I have played the whole exercise through, before I'm gonna give you tips on how to practice this study, let's see what notations are written on the score. There are not so many, but there are a couple of them that it's useful to know. So first of all, on the first measure, we see there's an H written, right? H, it's quite logical what it means. H means half length of the bow. It can be confusing, like, is it a half, the lower half of the bow, or is it the upper half of the bow? It's not really clear. I guess it's around over here. So the half would be more or less over here. Right? Because I think it's quite difficult to start on the lower half of the bow, in case of bow distribution, right? Um, it's really difficult to do that. So I guess it's more of this part of the bow here, that one. Then the next notations that we have here, we see some Roman numbers, right? If we go to the third line of uh, this exercise, we see a Roman number three, a Roman number two, a Roman number three again, number four, number three, number two, and so on. I'll explain you what that means in case if you don't know. So when we see a Roman number one, then it means it's the A string. That's Roman number one. Roman number two would be the D string. This one. Roman number three would be the G string. And then number four would be the C string. Now that we know what means what, let's go to the practice tips. So first things first, as this is a study for position changes, let's focus on that first, obviously. So here in this study, let's find where we have the position changes and then let's study these passages, especially the ones that hurt the most. So what do I want you to do? I want you to find these passages, so these position changes, and I want you to practice them by part. So I will give you the first couple of measures. So I'll play from the beginning again. So there we go. <laughs> we see we have a couple of position changes. So the first one would be this one. This one. So this we will practice first. Uh, 
fine. If we got that, we go to the next step. Then we continue. Aha, uh -huh. there is another one. So this we practice also separately. Okay, once you've got that, then we continue. One more. So we practice this separately, of course. And so on, the rest is on you. So why do I want you to practice this part per part? It is very important to focus on the things that is the most difficult for you. So in case if the position changes is difficult for you, it's important to get the passage where it hurts the most. Because what happens often, people often, they just play through again. So they start from the beginning and they play the whole thing again and they don't really practice it. They play out of tune, dirty sounds and so on. So you're just wasting your time. This way of practicing, what I'm giving you is just to optimize your practice time so you don't waste too much time on it. By the way, if you want to see a more detailed tutorial about position changes, definitely check out this video. I highly recommend that you check this video that will pop up right over here. So now that you have practiced the position changes, let's talk now about bow management, bow distribution, or in other words, the right use of the bow. So the right amount of the bow. So now that we know what H means, let's apply this to the exercise to see what do I mean with bow distribution. We've spoken about this already, but let me show you this a little bit more in detail. So that's why I said like it's weird to start, you know, with the lower half of the bow because it happens like this. <laughs> It is really difficult to get a nice sound and a nice singing line because we don't have enough space when we go until here. We are limited, you see. So that's why I prefer to start more or less at the middle. So what do I want you to do? I want you first to get the separated notes. So the notes that are not slurred, I want you to play them separately and to do this. <laughs> Anyway, sorry for my singing, but this is just to show you. So it's important that you play this freely. So the gesture here, it's important. I don't want to hear that kind of, you know, not really like attacking it. I want you to hit it gentle, sing it, let the note sing. Why is that to sing? First of all, because we're playing music and music, well, we cannot play mechanically. And second of all, when we sing and we speak the note until the end, this is gonna help us to make a nice bow connection. We will, we will speak about that in just a bit. So now that we did this separately, this note, now let's try to connect it. We do this for the rest of the exercise. So it is important that we stay organized and disciplined for the rest of the exercise. So another thing that we need to be careful here in this exercise is string crossing. There are so many annoying string crossings going on, especially there are so many big distances. So from the C string to the A string, because it's so easy to have unpleasant, dirty sounds on the moment we do the string crossing. So we have to stay disciplined. Let me explain you how to practice this. Again, we're gonna do that part per part separately. Let me show you the first couple of measures. So we start again from the beginning. So there we got the first one, this one. So here I want you to do what? Here I want you to find out where we have string crossings and we practice them separately. So we do this. Okay, that was the first one. Now the next one. Now, the next one would be in the second bar. Now, the third bar. Now. And so on. So this is a part, you can do this with open strings also. So you can improvise, you can figure out any exercise you want. Now let's try maybe this. 
So it is important on the separate note that we sing it, we speak it until the end. Because if we played this, mechanical would be this. So see, there is a gap. One more time, I'll show you the uh, difference. Did you hear the gap? Now, let's speak it until the end. See how organically and naturally that sounds. So that's why it's important to do the separated notes first. So that one. That would be step one. To find the right, use the right amount of the bow. And then we try to connect. Also, another thing that I forgot to mention before that I remembered now, that when we play the separate notes, it goes fast, not fast, sorry, fast is a wrong word. So we need to be quicker with the amount of bow, so check it out. But now we have three notes legato, so now the up bow would be slower. So let's do. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here, that's why bow distribution is very important, because what can happen is this. Uh, and that's it, you lost it. So you need to be extremely slow when you do the elbow. So the slurred notes, because it's a longer line. And now the last thing for today's exercise, and probably this is one of the most important thing in order to have a great, accurate and clean shiftings is left hand anticipation and left hand articulation. So two things in one. What is left hand anticipation? Left hand anticipation means that you need to prepare your left hand in advance in order to hit the next note accurately. Let me show you an example. Okay, maybe I'll show it a little bit too fast. Let me show it a little bit slower and by parts. So when we hit the first note, our pinky is already prepared to hit the D, the Re, right on the A string. So check it out. It's already there because what happens often? Often happens that the pinky, he's just, you know, traveling around being a tourist. So happens this. And then, okay, I played it in tune, but it can happen next time that it will not be in tune and as accurate as it needs to be. Then the next one would be this. So first, what happens? We're gonna have we're gonna have to hit now the C bemol or the B flat. So there it is, it's already stretched and ready to. So see, because if you don't have a good left hand anticipation, this happens. So you get completely lost, and then this exercise is gonna be extremely hard for you to do. So very slowly and very disciplined. Ready. Now we have a change going on. See how my hand moves. Ready for the next note. Pinky is getting ready to slide down. First finger is ready to hit the F because we have an extension here. See? So that's why left hand anticipation is very important. You can check the other uh, 3R tutorials where I explain more into detail. And of course, left hand articulation is very important. I repeat this in every lesson that I make, in every video I make, I always repeat it because this is crucial. Let me show you two examples, one without an articulation and another one with a good articulation. So. Let's do this. I, it hurts really. Now with articulation. And last but not least, we have some variations here. There are three of them, 
but I highly recommend that you do them. Let me show you for the first couple of bars how they sound like. So the first variation is very easy. Instead of starting with a down bow, like in the original exercise, we start up bow and then it's for the rest of the exercise. So just let me show you. So we start up bow, the same thing as in the original, but just opposite. <laughs> And so on until the rest of the exercise. Now the second variation is also very easy. Let me show you how this one goes. So as you could see, two notes per bow. Just the first note of the beginning of the exercises separately, then the rest goes two notes per bow. Here I suggest to you to use a generous amount of bowing. So really... Because here you can develop, you know, your sound. So be generous. This is important here in this second variation. And the last variation is very simple and this one is more focused for beautiful bow changes and a nice legato. So let me show you how this goes. So we start with the elbow. <laughs> and so on until the rest of the exercise. And remember, speak and sing the notes because that is gonna definitely help you to make nicer and beautiful lines. And with that, we finish for today's lesson and we just have covered study number 27 by Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. I hope you found it useful and helpful and that it will improve your position changes. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see us in the next lesson. Have a good practice and see you soon. Bye-bye.